Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology, and first daily Mormon history podcast. I'm Rick Bennett. I'm excited to conclude our conversation with George Potter. He's the director of the Nephi Project, and we're going to talk about Book of Mormon and and DNA. So this is often a sticky topic uh, with uh, Book of Mormon, so uh, we'll see how he handles that conversation with uh, the South American model of the Book of Mormon. We'll also talk about Thor Heyerdahl and Hagoth. You know, Thor uh, showed that there was transportation possible between the Polynesian Islands and South America, and uh, so it shows that a mission by Hagoth could have succeeded. So we'll talk about that and how that involves DNA as well. So you won't want to miss this conversation. Check it out. (laughs) Anyway, I feel that if you look at where is there the most likely a Nephite civilization and a Jaredite civilization in the Americas that's supported by archaeology, supported by mythology, oral traditions? Best look at South America at the moment. This book I told you about, 1491, before the uh, Columbus mm-hmm. in the Americas, what was the Americas like before Columbus? He talks about the fact that the whole archaeological world has turned upside down in the last two decades. Before, everybody thought the mother civilization was Mesoamerica. No, it's Peru. And it is all the technology, everything that happened there went, culturally went from South America northward eventually. So um, I just encourage people. And he also said that most of the attention that's been given archaeologically has been to Mesoamerica. Peru is just right now being discovered. You know, they're like the Nazca lines, they thought there were like 20 of them. Now they've found over 100 of them. Mm-hmm. They just keep discovering things down there. It's pretty new for archaeologists down there, especially like places like Altiplano, where they say there's like 150 different archaeological sites and they've excavated two or three. So let me ask you this. As far as, you know, there was a... I mean, it seems like Joseph Smith believed in a hemispheric model and, you know, basically North and South America. John Sorensen came in and said, no, we think it's more of a smaller area, limited geography. Um, Do you, is it all of South America, part of South America? How big is, is your theory, would you say? Is it more limited, or is it all of the continent, or what do you think? In one book, based on my research, based on the limited time I've had there, I spent a lot of time in Arabia, very mm-hmm. little time in Peru. But it's just like, wow, the place is just such a nursery for archaeology. And and, but, and Peru includes Chile, would you say, in your model? The, the original Chile. model that I, I have is that it starts in Colombia, Southern Colombia, it goes all the way down to northern Chile. The Andes countries, okay, those are basically what I believe would be the lands, primary lands of the Book of Mormon. I also believe that there is, there was lots of trade and communications between North, uh, North America, Mesoamerica, and South America. They know of ancient trade routes. They found Peruvian minerals up in North Carolina. And mm. and so you have the fact that the people who South America were going into Mesoamerica, into North America, bringing the technology, bringing the culture, bringing the belief systems into those areas, there could have been missionaries. How did, how did Moroni get from Peru to New York. Right. right. Okay, Hill Camorra. Well, it's not the Hill Camorra. Well, people call it Hill Camorra. How'd you get there? He had the a long theory. time to get there. I mean, right. you know, he was a young man when the Nephites were destroyed. Uh, most of the Nephites were destroyed. He had years. He could have walked around the world several times. He could have taken some pack animals, put the plates on it, and gone up there. They know they were using canoes to go from across the Caribbean. Um, so there could have been trade. There could have been lots of uh, intermarriages and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So they're, they're all the children of Israel. You know, and then, of course, we're all children of God, but 
the seed of Lehi, it could have been everywhere. They mix. So he asked, where was the model? Well, what's fascinating is they're found in the Amazon basin. These are primitive tribes. They have DNA from Polynesia. Now, how did that take place? Did the people well, from, from the Amazon go to, <laughs> to the Polynesian islands, or did the Polynesians come there? Yeah, and I've heard that there's happen. trade between Polynesia and South America. Right. But the problem is, for a lot of people, since you mentioned DNA, I want to go that way. We don't have any Israelite, Israelite DNA in South America. Do you have any Hebrew DNA right. in anywhere in the Americas? If you want to, want to be frank, now, yes, Swanson yes, Institute, you know, years ago came out and said they had found Hebrew DNA in um, Bolivia and in Brazil, in Amazon. They had found Hebrew DNA. They recounted that a couple of years later. Not because they didn't find Hebrew DNA there. They said they could not verify that it wasn't been influenced by the Spanish right. or the colonists. Right. So it wasn't certain anything for sure. Now, another interesting DNA study, and I can, I can give you the links to that. But remember, that they, the Incas believed four brothers came, okay? And when these brothers came, there are other people there, whether they're Jaredites or just, uh, you know, an indigenous population. So you don't believe South, South America was empty when they got here, basically. Okay. Couldn't have been, because they were fighting wars and multitudes of people. And right. Nephi talks about his friends who believed in him. Well, who are those people, you know, who went with him to the city okay. of Nephi? So anyway, yeah, I don't believe it. There were just this pocket. There are people in the Americas. We know that. So... The four brothers come, and they then enter this indigenous population, and they teach them all these different things. Well, the DNA, there's a team of international DNA guys, and they were working out of Peru, who have gone to the Incas, people who tie themselves to the royal family of the Incas, which I believe were the Nephites, okay? And, you know, they're not pure, pure, but they, they say they can test their lines back to the royal family, the Incas. They looked at their DNA, and they said, there's something curious about the DNA. There was a influx of DNA coming into that line back, you know, a short period, you know, in terms of DNA time. And this confirms, or I would say the word confirms, it matches so well the idea of four brothers coming in and mixing it. In fact, the article, the, it was, I think it's written in the uh, Journal of Science, um, Natural Science, says DNA uh, confirms the legend of the four brothers that come into South America. Maybe That's the four not LDS. Came in 600 BC? Is that what no, you're they, can't, they can't nail 600 BC. They just know that not too many generations back, there was this inf small influx of a foreign DNA coming into the the general DNA pool of the Inca line. So they're, they're saying that that confirms it. And it's not, it has nothing to do with the church. These are scientists who, who claim that this DNA supports, mm -hmm. let's say the word supports, the theory of the four brothers entering as a exogenous DNA line into the Peruvian culture. But we don't know that it's Hebrew. It was just foreign. We don't know that it's Hebrew DNA. No, we don't know it's Hebrew DNA. We don't know what Lehi's DNA was. Did you know what Lehi's DNA was? Well, <laughs> it's not Hebrew. My, my response is always he immediately that. says he was Egyptian. I mean, he was, uh, you know, he was actually an Arab. Because uh, the Lemba tribe, have you heard of the Lemba tribe? And so they are black Africans in South Africa. They have Hebrew DNA. Yeah. And they date from about 600 BC. Have you ever read the book uh, In the Blood? No. Okay. Um, but I might just have that here somewhere. Um, he said, uh, he wrote a book, um, and the thing that's fascinating about his book, excuse me, was that he came to Salt Lake because he was Genesis, and he's looking at DNA and the best records on genealogy. 
to, to support illnesses and things like that is found in, of course, our genealogical records or family history records. So he came here and uh, he, he wrote a book about what happens to DNA when it is spread into a, a small bit of DNA, gets into a larger pool. So he studied, for example, the Jews that went down to Yemen. There was a group in, in Yemen, historically had been Jews. The, um, the Israelis had a airlift down there to steal these people and bring them back to Israel, you know, get them out of Yemen. They got back to Israel, they found out they had no Hebrew DNA. They had Arab DNA. Found the same thing happened when they did the... Um, Inquisition in Spain, where the Jews had to flee from 1942 from the Inquisition. They had to get out of Spain or be killed unless they converted. They all went to Turkey, or a good portion of them went to Turkey. They went and tested the Jews in, in Turkey. Guess what? They didn't have Hebrew DNA. They had Turkish DNA. Because Romeo and Juliet, I'm sorry, people mix. Whether they have religious sanctions against it, it doesn't matter. Love proceeds. It was really funny when I lived in Switzerland. There was a, a canton, Appenzell. There's upper lower Appenzell and lower Appenzell. It's a valley that goes up into the Alps. And traditionally, upper Appenzell were Catholics. And lower Appenzell were um, Protestants. And about 1900s, early 1900s, they got upset because the Catholic boys were marrying the Protestant girls and vice versa. And so they forced everybody who was a Catholic to go up into the upper Appenzell, mm -hmm. from lower Appenzell and vice versa. So they did that. Everybody had to move. So they purified Protestants and Catholics. Guess what happened? 20 years later, they were mixing again, and they finally just gave up, okay? Even though they had very strong convictions that they shouldn't do that, love prevails. So it's really hard to, to take a DNA sample of a group and say, okay, what happened when you mix it? So if, if Lehi got there, there's what, how many, six sons, basically, mm -hmm. they they intermarry themselves for a few generations, and then they start marrying everybody else. It, 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 it dies out very quickly. And that's what uh, Stephen Jones says in his book, In the Blood. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. He's not an LDS, of course. And he's a, but yeah, we have this Polynesian stuff, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah, because that's kind of isolated out in the, in the Amazon. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's hard to explain. But they know the Polynesians are trading. Mm -hmm. But it brings you back to Hagoth, okay? Hagoth makes these boats, and from what I understand, the church leaders have always said that the Hawaiians are the children of Hagoth. Have you heard that? I've heard that. Yeah. So, if that's so, Hagoth had to travel north. He sailed north. Well, to get to Hawaii from Peru, you got to sail north, and eventually take the currents over, or the winds mm -hmm. over now, if you travel from some other direction, the heartland or some other place, you don't travel north to get to Hawaii. You travel west. But from Peru, you go north. So it's interesting when the, uh, the, the Incas have always had uh, the seafaring nation. When the first encounter that the Spanish had, it was with the Incas. They were 150 miles out in the ocean. They were headed out to some island to trade. And they're in a bolsa ship. And the Spanish go, oh my gosh, you know, these guys are out in the middle of the ocean. Well, they knew where they were going. They were trading. Have you ever compared the, the ships, the reed ships in Lake Titicaca with the reed, reed ships in Mesopotamia? Mm -hmm. They're identical. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely identical. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, Thor Heyerdahl wanted to, travel, I guess, on the Ra originally. Yeah. The Ra originally, you know, he went and got some shipbuilders from Egypt. And, of course, the Ra fell apart halfway across the ocean. So what did he do? He went to Bolivia and got Bolivians to build his ships, his reed ships. But, you know, the, the, the ships are the same. You know, it's, it's, 
it's crazy, you know, at the end they have a, a head of an animal on it and there are these reed ships that will sail. Mm -hmm. Go to Lake Titicaca in Bolivia and then go to look at the Mesopotamian yeah, ship. they got a lot of trips to play ahead. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going, Bolivia, to, I'm, going, I'm going to Peru in May, end of May. Anybody wants to see Book of Mormon sites, I'll take them to the Jaredite site. I'll take them to Zarahemla, Bountiful, and City of uh, Nephi. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll just tell them what is there and what they've discovered, and then they can make up their own mind. Mm -hmm. But I was asked to give a, go on a cruise ship one time to some other location. I said I can't go there because I'd ruin I'd ruin the people's vacation. You know? <laughs> <laughs> there's no there's no Book of Mormon civilization there. Please find it. So look at any old interior internal map that you want. Say okay, Swanson, whoever you know. Well, whoever whoever it is, here you show me your map. Okay, now let's go there and dig. Okay, and let's study all that's already been reported about the, the civilization that lived there. Were they a Nephite civilization? The best I can come up with is Peru, and I think it's a pretty strong argument. <laughs> all right, well, I kept, kept you a long time. time. I don't want to keep you too much longer, but thank you. Well, okay. George Potter for being here on Gospel Tent. It's really appreciate My it. pleasure. Best wishes to all your listeners. and May they keep exploring, okay? Mm -hmm. We're just at the beginning of this. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our conversation with George Potter, the director of the Nephi Project. George, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Can't wait till we uh, Easter. We're going to replay part of our interview where we talked about Mount Sinai. So I'm looking forward to that. In our next conversation, I'd like to introduce Dr. Rosalind Welch from the Maxwell Institute. This is our, our new book that I have um, co-authored with my friend Adam Miller. It's titled Seven Gospels, The Many Lives of Christ in the Book of Mormon. And it was published by Deseret Book and just out about a month ago. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if we can get this out before Christmas, get it for Christmas. And if it's after Christmas, get it anyway. Still get it, yeah. <laughs> Evergreen. <laughs> If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, subscribe on either Patreon or at GospelTangents.com. For just $5 a month, you can hear the entire audio uninterrupted. On our $10 tier, if you'd like to see the whole video, you can see that uh, either on YouTube.com slash GospelTangents, or I've got a special Facebook group devoted for uh, full videos. So subscribe at GospelTangents.com and uh, sign up for just $10 a month. For $20 a month, if you'd like to get some bonus content, uh, maybe some of the stuff that ended up on the cutting room floor, you can sign up for that. And then if you'd like to talk to me for $100 a month, we'll, we'll do a monthly phone call on something like Zoom, and you can ask me anything you want. So thanks again. Also, don't forget about the merch, mugs, t-shirts, um, hats, things like that. I'm trying to get the ties up there. Hopefully I can get up, up there. And uh, thanks again for watching Gospel Tangents and click here for some more videos.